that was a monster. I just had a monster on my jaw jacker and it snapped the line like nothing. Did you see that? That was a tank. He just like inhaled. I've never had a fish hit that hard before. I didn't even get a chance to fight him. He just busted the line like nothing. Okay, we gotta get another slender spoon. That was crazy. There we go. Slender spoon does it again. Slender spoon in the worm. He came in, hit it, I missed him, dropped it back down, bam, fish on. Really aggressive today. Let's see if we can catch some more, even bigger ones than that. That's a beauty. Can keep five, so I'll keep that one. We'll keep on going. So I drill lots of holes in the morning. I have like 10 holes along this weed line. I was just hopping from hole to hole to hole. If you're down there for two, three minutes, you don't see anything. They're cruising these edges and lots of time trout will just go back and forth along the same 10 to 15 feet. I've watched them in the spring and summertime. They'll just cruise that same area back and forth. They have their own territory. So if you're not in that territory, you won't be catching them. So I just move. If I don't see anything, move the next hole, next hole. I just got here. Saw the fish down there, bam, caught him right away. It doesn't take any time. There's actually fish in the area and they're actively feeding. They should be biting your hook. Don't sit in a hole if you're not catching anything. Pop those holes in first thing in the morning so you don't scare the fish off all day long and then get fishing. really having to hole hop here in the late morning but uh, moving around I mark fish and then they'll come in and bite here's another beautiful brook trout look at how fat these brook trout are they're just like little pigs I think they're bigger around than they are long. <laughs> All in that gold and glow slender spoon with a little piece of night crawler like that. And look what I've done. I've changed out the treble to a better treble and a bit bigger. The ones they come with are a little too small and they're not hard enough. You have to buy a, you know, a better hook in order to catch more fish with these things. I find with those ones they come with, they're cheap, they bend, the fish come off really easy. So put up, take the time, upgrade your treples, get a better one, put it on there and get fishing. Don't wait until you start losing fish. So you saw first thing in the morning, it was best right up against those pencil reeds, like five, six feet out from the pencil reeds. Well, things slowed down. Look at this, another fish coming in here. Oh, I got another one. Well, that's a nice one. Oh boy, that's a nice one. And I moved out, you can see about 30 feet now. This is a bigger uh, brook trout. This is a good one. Oh yeah, nice one. Oh, he's not, not that much bigger. He's actually a smaller one. We'll let that one go, because he's not hooked bad. He's one of the smaller ones. Not as obese as those other ones. Beautiful, on that slender spoon. Gone. Like I was saying, first thing in the morning, fish in the shallower water. They were right up against those uh, reeds there. And now, I actually moved out, you know, 20, 30 feet out in five to six feet of water instead of three to four feet, and they're uh, cruising at this depth. That's three in a row I caught here in this hole. And it's six feet deep, and I'm actually on the beginning of a shoal. So, just to my right, it drops off to 10, 12 feet, and it comes up to that five, six foot hump, and that shoal actually goes up. So I'm right on that transition, and that's where you want to find the fish. You can fish that whole edge of that transition, and if it slows down, try even on top, that shoal area, that's where you'll catch them uh, throughout the day, probably. A lot of people 
you know, they'll, they'll know where to catch fish early in the morning, but when they disappear, they'll take off or they'll sit there for the rest of the day and not catch anything. Go move, find the fish. They're still in the lake. They haven't gone anywhere. That's why I love lake fishing. Rivers, you know, they can disappear, but in the lake, they're still in here. Just find them. Fish are opportunistic feeders. Sure, they might be a little slower during the day, but trust me, they'll still eat a well-presented bait. That's something that they might want to eat. So go for it, move around, especially with your electronics, hop from hole to hole, till you start seeing fish, drill more holes in that depth range, and you'll get on fish most of the day. Hopping around from hole to hole again and just smoked another nice one on the slender spoon. They're loving that. I released a bunch too. So they took the camera around, but caught a bunch. But when you're hopping from hole to hole, I didn't want to drag the camera around. Maybe I'll start carrying it around again since they're still biting. Okay, let's go get some. Only one more to get my limit. I might save it for a nice rainbow trout if I get one later. So maybe I'll just be catching and releasing. Well, guys, it's getting to be evening on this lake. And I moved around because I wanted to try to find a big rainbow trout. Uh, to keep but I don't need to keep a rainbow trout because I just caught a massive brook trout It's my personal best and that's another thing when you're going to new lakes This one actually has an underwater map and there's an underwater island which comes up to a few feet And it's out in the middle so I came out and I found it, it takes a while to drill holes and find them but Once you do fish on the edges and right away I had big fish come in Sometimes the biggest fish in the lake will hold on those underwater structures and nobody else fishes them because nobody will take the time to go and drill. A lot of guys here in BC have hand augers and when you have a power auger you can just pop 20-30 holes and find structure. So that's the benefit of having a power auger is find it. Okay, look at this fish. Look at this beast. Oh yeah, look at that monster brook trout on that slender spoon right there oh man look at that tank he's so fat what a beast look at that baby okay let's get back down there because there were lots chasing my lure and this guy crushed it up and down they're chasing it from the bottom back up to the top Another decent little brookie on the slender spoon. There we go. That's a decent one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh yeah. Oh, oh this one's got some weight to him. Oh, this one's got some weight to him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was a rainbow. Maybe about a 17, 18 incher, but man, those guys can fight. Oh, oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, oh, oh. Man, those rainbows, they fight hard. They're not very big, but man, they fight. These little Panasque rainbows. They fight so hard for a rainbow that big, man. They pull good. Here comes one. There we go. This one's decent. It's not huge, but nice one. Brookie, nice brookie on the slender. <laughs> 